Okay. Thank you. You're listening to How I Grieve, a weekly podcast about grief. Stories will be shared, they will inspire, and they will teach. Now your hosts, Ian and Amy. And time for another important episode of How I Grieve. Our motto is grieving differently, (laughs) healing collectively. Uh, I am one of your co-hosts. My name is Ian. We say hello to Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Ian. How are you? I'm really good. Nice to see you again. It'll be so much easier when we finally get to be in the same room when we're doing this. But uh, yes, I'll take, what I, I'll take what I can get till then. Uh, our guest this morning is uh, is very like minded in what we're doing, and she has suffered uh, a, a huge loss of her own, but believes in what we do and actually does something very similar. So we'll say good morning to Kiki Garcia. Hi, Kiki. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Oh, absolutely. And I love that you reached out to us and and, uh, I I looked at your YouTube channel and it's very like minded in the sense that we all agree here on this on this uh, show that it's just so important to give people a place to share the story of their grief. Mm -hmm. The number one thing um, I felt through this whole process of my dad getting sick and passing away was just the sense of being alone. And when I saw your podcast pop up and and I had seen your story play out on Facebook, I just, I said, you know what, you're, you're not alone. There's people, we need to talk about this because grief and passing, it's just something that we all have to deal with. And you know, what I really thought about was my daughter. Um, I have a 21 year old uh, stepdaughter and I didn't want her to feel lost and confused and alone, like I felt. And that's why I really started just talking about it and making the videos and sharing. All right, so we're gonna get to all of that, which is super important, but the most important part is the the topic and subject of your grief. Uh, and that is your dad. First of all, what do you, what do you do something very similar to what I do. You uh, do morning radio, but in Albuquerque, yes? I do, yep. I work for Cumulus in Albuquerque, uh, 93.3 The Q, Carlos and Kiki in the morning. Okay. Um, I've been here for ooh, 20 years now. So Holy, holy cow, yeah. good for you. Um, so you live your life transparently like I do when I'm on, on the radio here. And, totally, yep. yes. Uh, which, is, which is great most of the times, but in times like this, it can be kind of challenging, but it has its benefits too when we're dealing with grief but let's talk about your dad how how special of a human being was your dad to you tell me share some share some maybe childhood memories or some moments that just put a smile on your face you know he was just everything to me I had a mom who was a little controlling and so I didn't get to spend all the time I wanted with my dad growing up which of course made me just want to spend more time with him than ever and um He loved airplanes. I remember when I was a kid, we would go to LaGuardia Airport in New York, and there used to be a restaurant that you could go to and watch the planes take off. There was a deck that you could actually go outside. And I love planes. I always wanted to be a flight attendant. I thought that was the best. (laughs) And I remember my dad saying, why a flight attendant? Be a pilot. And, you know, he was just always encouraging and quirky I I noticed spending more time with him I have like some of his quirks and some of his mannerisms and it just uh it gave gave me such a connection to him I just I I miss him every minute I swear you know and that's going to be the hard part of grief as you um live with it uh, for the rest of your life is there's going to be those moments those mannerisms those triggers uh that will that will cause you pause. That will cause you a moment where you have to collect yourself. And, and uh, you know, that again, that's, that's living with grief. So dad, um, super great guy, but then uh, he gets sick. Yeah. So what it started last year, um, uh, actually in 2019, um, in uh, August, my mom started having back pain and we thought it was that she tweaked her back. Well, it turned out to be cancer that metastasized in her uh, spine. So 2020 started off with my mom passing away in February. Oh, I'm so sorry. February 5th. And 
instead of dealing with that grief, I was so worried about my dad, like every minute I, you know, making sure he's okay. He was in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and I'm of course in Albuquerque. So I made a plan. I was going to come visit him once a month, spend, a, you know, as long as I could. And then of course COVID hit. So I um, didn't see him for two months. And then as soon as I felt, you know, comfortable enough, I went to go see him and I would spend a week. I mean, luckily COVID gave me the freedom that I could do my show from there. So we had a great summer. Everything was fine. His biggest thing was he had to get cataract surgery. And because of COVID, um, they kept putting it off, putting it off. And he thought his eye was getting worse because of the, the cataracts. Well, September, I leave him. Um, and literally the next day, he wiped his eye and he realized he couldn't see out of it. Mm. Um, so he went to the hospital. He spent a week in one hospital. They didn't know what the hell was going on. Right. And then finally, um, I came to town and he went to Boston. And uh, it turned out to, well, they still didn't really know. They were saying it was lymphoma. Um, but what it turned out to be in the end was glioblastoma. Uh, which is brain cancer and I mean it, it literally I never expected this uh, I was in my head he was going to be alive for 10 15 years we had all this time that we were finally going to get to spend together and then that was it it was just so quick so you suffered uh, loss twofold and never really got to address the grief of your mom either. No, not at oh. all, not at all. And then, I mean, to top it all off, in April when I was home, um, my cat, who I've had for 14 years, passed away suddenly too. All the same symptoms of my mom too, which was, you know, it makes you get that little creeping mm -hmm. feeling like, mm -hmm. oh my God, really? <laughs> this is happening again? Yep. Like how why and make no mistake if you're listening right now make no mistake the loss of a pet is equally as devastating mm -hmm. as the loss of your human Definitely, uh, because you invest emotionally equally i believe in these lifelong relationships with these pets and and uh having i think everyone on this call has suffered the loss of a pet and and it's it's hard it's mm -hmm. hard so now you've got three layers of grief right that you know now basically are faced with addressing all at once, finally, once and for all. Right. And it's just, it's devastating. You don't want to get out of bed. Some days I'm like, I don't even want to get out of bed, but I make did you, myself. <laughs> did you seek any help from a professional? Right away. So yeah. here's the, the lesson. My dad was very big on, there has to be a reason. There has to be a lesson from all of this. What's the lesson? I'm never a person to ask for help. I'll figure it out. I'll do it myself. I'll, you know, pull it into the house myself. I don't need you. And the first day I was back at the house after he passed on December 30th, my neighbor came over and I just broke down in the, the driveway and she said, do you need help? And I said, yes, without even one second of a delay. Like it didn't, it, yes. Like before she even finished her sentence. And I think that's the lesson that I've learned is that it's okay to ask for help. It doesn't make you weak. It actually shows you that you are self-aware and know where your weaknesses lie, that you need someone's help. And it's not bad to add, ask for help at all. And yeah. Amy, go ahead, because you taught me oh. that lesson too. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's so hard when you are the person on the outside looking in, meaning family, friends, um, neighbors, um, mm -hmm. and they, they feel the pain and they don't know what to do. And so offering help, a meal, um, a listening ear, I think the thing that I have learned over the years is by accepting that invitation, you are blessing them as well. Mm -hmm. It's not just a blessing to you. Um, and I think that, you know, just giving, giving permission 
for others to join us in our grief um, is, is a blessing. Mm -hmm. She, she got me in touch with a bereavement group through her church and it has been life changing for me because I don't feel alone anymore. I can cry when I want to, when I tell them, I don't know, I just don't know, like I'm lost. I don't know. They understand because they've been there. They're going through it too. And I just have fallen in love with this group and these people through a Zoom call. And yeah. I just feel blessed. Community is yep. so thank important. For, mm -hmm. Yep. And thank goodness for Zoom and other platforms like that, because even just equating it to uh, the Sunday school class that, uh, that Amy and I uh, help lead, um, you know, when we don't have it, the people in our group almost in a in a strange way mourn the loss of not having it on that day they miss it they they it's part of their way of feeling connected to that group that you talk about that you feel comfortable right. in a safe space with crying with or being angry with or sharing your opinions with and things like that so um so it's good uh, i applaud you for seeking therapy right away i i did the same thing when michelle passed because I, I, again i i realized how important it was i knew i couldn't do it on my own i was blessed with a large support system but still i needed someone to talk to because i needed the tools to deal with the ptsd of of the the, the sudden loss of of my wife and so that helped me a lot but i did something that looking back on i still don't regret since we, you and i both live our lives transparently mm -hmm. Um, I went on the air the very next weekday, lost mm -hmm. Michelle on a Friday, went on the air on a Monday. Um, and being in radio, it's a unique position where you feel that you have developed such a relationship with your listeners that they are equally uh, important and, you, and family and you want to share with them the loss because it's a loss to them as well because they've invested so much in you and your story. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do it for three days before it just became incredibly hard, more physically because I wasn't sleeping than anything else. How hard is it for you to live your life transparently like that? Like how hard has it been for you to share your grief with your listeners and has it helped? You know, it has helped a lot. Here's the thing. My mom was such a, oh, we have to cover everything up. We can't talk about mm -hmm. it. That I am the opposite. I'll tell you anything you want to know. I don't <laughs> care. I have no filter. I don't care. Okay. Um, so my dad passed away on December 30th. I had just happened to take that week off. So um, it was a Wednesday. So I went back to work on Monday. And remember, it was, it was uh, virtual. I, we weren't together yet. And I remember I was upset. I was crying. And my partner, he's such a wonderful man. And he had lost his dad um, a while ago as well. So he completely understood what I went through. And um, I, um, um, when, when I took my dad home from the hospital, because he was there twice, the in-between time I would record my show in the other room and I would come back to my dad and he'd say, you know, I just love listening to you laugh for an hour, like for an hour a day, you sound so happy because you're with your partner and you're on the radio and you're doing your thing that I the first break we did of the morning, um, I said, you know, I just have to say thank you to my partner, Carlos, because my dad loved the joy that he brought me. Yeah. And I said, I am here now doing the show and not taking time off because I feel like I'm honoring my dad. He would not want me to just crumble. He wants me to be happy. He loved that I'm on the radio. I mean, I wanted to do this since I was five. So I'm following my lifelong dream and I'm successful at it. And I wanted to honor him by, first of all, sharing his story and also being there for my listeners who are amazing. And I just didn't want to let him down. And it was hard. The, the first break was... We, we talked about the whole what happened and how it happened and everything. But, you know, by the end of the show, we were laughing again and it was what I needed. I, I didn't want to crumble and just be in a ball. And it's so easy. Like, you know, it's so easy just to, I give up. I'm just yeah. going back to bed. Yep. And yeah. I just couldn't do that in honor of my dad. I couldn't let that happen. And I think the lesson... <laughs> maybe it taught you, it taught me is 
those moments of levity while you were talking and discussing about your this your huge loss, mm -hmm. those moments of levity didn't feel misplaced. And it taught you that it's okay to be happy in a strange sort of way mm -hmm. amidst all this stuff. Amy? I was just going to say, I mean, I think that it can be also misunderstood that sometimes from the outside looking in, and I think, I think Ian and I can relate to this, that um, <clears throat> some people looking at that and seeing you happy, quote unquote, happy, um, can seem like you've moved on and you're fine and you're no longer grieving and somehow you must not have loved your, your Spouse. loved one enough, yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, is, I, which is yeah. really a challenge. And it's a hurtful thing to say, who are you, who are you to tell me how much you think I loved or didn't love my loved one, you know, and Amy and I have both been the recipient of that line and it's, uh, it's a, it's a pretty awful thing to say to another human being. You know, it's interesting in my family, no one ha deals with death. It's just not done. Um, and first of all, I want to break that cycle because I think you do need to deal with it. My outlook is that you cannot be truly happy or know what true happiness is unless you know what true sadness is as well. I, my pet peeve is people who say everything's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's amazing. That's awesome. You're stunning. Okay. Not everybody's stunning. That's, and not everything's awesome. And if everything's awesome, then nothing is. So you're not a big fan of the Lego movie, I'm guessing. <laughs> I haven't even seen Everything it. is awesome. Yeah, There's no. a whole theme song. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. But I, I, I kind of feel sad. I have people in my family who don't deal with the death. They move on right away. Right away. We got to talk about something else. Yeah. And, you know, pretend it didn't happen. And I feel kind of sad for them because I don't think they're living a full life. I don't think they, they're missing things in their life because you have to be able to have a low point as well and get through it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the inspiring to other people part of life. That's the, look what this person did. I could do it too. And I, I think, think, yeah, in the community as we are, that's an inspiring thing to see for other people. The challenge is, you know, when you're the one that's grieving, allowing, taking the time and allowing it to happen, mm -hmm because pushing through it, rushing through it, acting like it doesn't happen, it will come out in a different way. Mm -hmm. And it does not feel good when it's happening. I remember crying and thinking, I just don't want to cry anymore because crying doesn't feel like there's no real relief. Mm -hmm. I don't feel better after I finish crying. Um, but knowing that I needed to do that in order to be authentic and to be able to then move, move forward. I don't say move on, but move forward um, in the process. And you're right, we, as a society, we absolutely suck at grief. We yep. suck at it, we suck at death. Yep. You know, we were talking before this uh, show started, we were talking off air and uh, Kiki, you brought up a very good point. Uh, and that is, you know, this is something that should be taught in in school. You know, how early? That's that's a discussion for another time. I would say middle school, um, but some people might push back and say junior high or high school. But there should be classes for kids to understand death and grief because it has no timeline. These kids who are in school are suffering some sort of loss, and they need to know how to deal with it. And rather than, you know, wait until it happens, then bring a grief counselor in, give them the tools to in a preemptive way to deal with it. I agree. I mean, I completely agree. Um, and you know, a funny thing happened too with my dad passing away. It, it almost made me not fear death anymore. I, you know, I my mom was, oh, I don't wanna ever die. I don't wanna get old. I got to do this, I got to do that and stay young and plastic surgery and blah, blah, blah. And with the passing of my dad, it, it's not, it's not all sad. And if you, if you actually are with someone when they're going through the stages of passing away, 
there's parts that are beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's parts that are heartbreaking, sad, yes. But there's also like amazing things that happen. My mom and my dad both were reaching out, reaching out. And to me, I mean, with the way I believe, my dad and my mom were like one degree of heaven. Like that's an extraordinary gift to be given, to be Mm -hmm. that close, still being here, but to see someone do that. My mom went through a lot when she was passing. It was not, I wouldn't say it wasn't peaceful, but she had to work through things first. And she kept talking about, oh, they're going to have dinner, but they won't let me in yet. They won't let me come down the stairs yet. I can't go yet. They won't let me Mm -hmm. in. And I mean, it was knowing her history and her life and to hear her say those words, the pieces fell into place and it's just extraordinary. And I feel sad that if you have that, I don't want to say opportunity, but if you have, it's a gift, I think, to be able to see that and to understand. And then now I know what's going to happen. And now I sat down with my daughter and I told her, and now she's going to know, I don't want her to be lost. I don't, and you know, I, I, I want to prepare her for this. So she's not completely in the dark. You know, ultimately you experienced something that most cultures in the world embrace and experience, but we as Americans, um, okay, this is going to sound maybe a little judgy, but we as Americans, you know, we think we do everything right and it should be done our way. Mm-hmm. And if our way is to not recognize grief and sadness and be there when a loved one passed, because that's just not what we do. And if we ignore it, it'll go away. Then that must be the way it should be done. But so many other cultures across the planet are there and hold mm-hmm. that person's hand and let them slip away and, and, and experience. And we do that with our pets. Why don't we do that with our humans? I you know, know we're the, we, we, we want to be there. The veterinarians give us a room a quiet room so we can be there with the pet once the once they're euthanized as a, as a loved one's passing away why can't we have that that safe space that room where we can spend that last few moments with them but but a lot of times we don't and mm-hmm. we should i know i know it, and i know even after he passed you know they don't they don't call the funeral home right away Right. They give you time because you need that time. It's you're going through so much. And then all of a sudden it's over. You can't just pull away. You have to work through it first. I don't, I don't know. I, I just think it's fascinating how we don't talk about this. And I really want to. Yeah. Uh, t- two of the best moments for me, most important moments for me uh, that helped me in my grief uh, because that night, that Friday night was 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 hard, uh, and it created a lot of my PTSD that I've worked through. But at the hospital, after the doctor and, and uh, the lead pastor came in and told me that uh, Michelle had passed, they let me spend a few minutes with her in a side room, um, white sheet over her, up to her neck, and and um, that was hard. But it was quiet. Mm-hmm. You know, that quiet where I could talk to her was really important. And then at the funeral home, uh, before her cremation, uh, I need part of the process was you needed to identify the body. Um, and uh, my best friend Joe told me that I probably shouldn't do it. He says it's very traumatic. I said, no, I need to. Because all I had in my head running around in my head was the trauma of that Friday night. And I was able to go into this dimly lit room. It was very calm. It was very serene. Uh, and there was Michelle laying there. And I was able to just sit there and hold her hand and talk to her and, and have that moment I wish I had had that Friday night where she just simply was laying in bed and maybe hospice was there and she was able to slip away and I was able to hold her hand. Um, and I felt robbed of that moment. So when I was at the funeral home and they gave me that moment, it was, it was so important looking back um, that what you're talking about, what we're talking about on this call is, is if you have the opportunity and life doesn't steal your loved one away from you by some tragic accident, mm-hmm. as hard as it is, embrace that and sit with that person and and tell them goodbye and, and tell them you love them, mm-hmm. you know? So when my mom passed away, we had her at home in hospice and I was giving her the, the morphine and the, the drugs. And, you know, when a person is on that, on the drugs and, and passing their face kind of gets contorted. Mm-hmm. And for my dad, it was, cause we never left her side. Um, the whole time she was in hospice at home for three days and 
we were there the whole time by her side. And for him, it was so hard to see her face like that. So the next, and he kept talking about, oh, her face, her face, like, why did it get like that even after she was gone? And the next day when we went to the funeral home, of course they, they fix it. And it was such a gift for my dad to be able to see my mom's face right again. Mm -hmm. Like he, he kept saying, thank goodness, thank goodness, thank goodness. Yeah. Like I get her it. face was, I mean, these are all gifts. And if you, I don't know if you don't not take advantage of them, but accept them you're missing out and you're the one who is missing out on it because yep. you're never going to get that back again. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, as we, as we work in the last few minutes of the show today, um, you have gone through your, 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 your grief and you're still living with your grief and you decide, okay, I'm going to be intentional about sharing my stories and you decide on your YouTube channel, which if you search Kiki Garcia, uh, you can see Kiki's videos. Um, when did you have that moment where you're like, I'm going to keep on sharing. I want to, I want to share. Was it almost immediate after dad's passing or did you, did it take some time? This is what happened. So my dad, we, uh, we had, um, um, uh, every time I would visit Cape Cod, we would go to the dump. The dump in Chatham on Cape Cod is serious business. Oh yeah. Everything <laughs> is broken down. Everything is, you know, monitored. It's crazy. And we would take videos that that's what we would do. So my dad, you know, and I love abandoned places. So we had a plan. We were going to make videos of abandoned places and visit dumps. That was our plan. Okay. He loved making videos with me. So when he was in the hospital, he said, you know, you have got to share our story because we're not just sitting here crying the whole time we weren't crying at all well I was crying but he wasn't as much and uh um he he said you have to share our story because we're sitting here laughing and we're having fun and we're you know figuring out how to eat without being able to see and you have to share our story so even while we were home I made a video about just the frustration and the hard the hard um, things that we were going through, just, you know, getting frustrated with things. So after he passed, I said, you know, I have to continue this. Like I have a story to tell. My dad wants me to tell the story. I just had to figure out a way to do it. And I, for me, videos were the yeah. best way. I'm not really yeah. a writer. So. Well, it sounds like, uh, Sounds like your dad was a smart man and knew what he was doing when he told, when he encouraged you to keep doing this. Yeah, so. he really was. Yeah. 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 Sorry. No, do, do, do not, you do not, <laughs> listen, you are on how I grieve. You do not need to apologize for <laughs> yeah. getting emotional. Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, I, I applaud you, Kiki, for, uh, for going through this. Uh, and I've watched a lot of your videos, feeling alone, walks on the beach, walking on the, be the beach was very therapeutic. I believe mm -hmm. water is very healing. So yeah. kudos for that. And even some of your unboxings and your makeup tips, oh. it's, all, it's all part of the process, right? Yeah. It's all part of the process, that creativity yeah. outlet that will help you continue mm -hmm. to grieve properly. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, you know, uh, quickly again, radio station you work on and how people can listen to you online. Sure, uh, 93.3 The Q, uh, we're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Carlos and Kiki in the morning, you can go to iHeartMedia, the app, and you sure, can find sure. us, or we have our own app, and uh, you can go to kikigarcia.com, and all of my information's there as well. All right, so another episode of How I Grieve in the Books, howigrieve.com, you can also find us on podcasting sites, wherever you listen to podcasts, and look on the social medias for How I Grieve. We'll talk again next week. Kiki Garcia, thank you so much. Thank you. This has been another episode of How I Grieve. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow on Facebook. If you would like to share a story or be a guest on the show, email howigrieve at gmail.com.